Hello, everybody. This is the 2021 candidate for governor of Virginia. My name is Merle Rutledge. If you don't know the name, now you know the name because I'm back. And that's a good thing for Virginia for me to be back on the campaign trail. Now, my discussion today is a town hall today. It's kind of like a question and answer after I'm done giving out my speech. Now, first off, a lot of politicians talk about they are looking for criminal justice reform. They are trying to make sure it happens. They're trying to do something. While for the last century, they haven't been doing nothing. Now, all of a sudden, I'm supposed to believe that criminal justice reform, the people are supposed to believe that this is really coming. Cut the crap. Because for the Obama administration, see, he lives by this audacity of hope. That's Obama and the Democrats and the Democrats today. They live by the hope factor. I live by what I call love 2A. I live by I wish would mess up with the American people factor. That's that's my Motto, I wish you would mess with the American people and try to screw them over. Obama and the Democrats, that's the hope factor. I hope there will be change. I hope we will have men going into the women's restroom. <laughs> I hope. That's what they tell you, Democrats, every single day, and you buy the crap. Let's tell the truth about what's really going on here in America. See, the smoke and mirrors is going away with my campaign, and they know it. That's why they have all this time trying to figure out how to report me, how to interview me, how to do whatever they do, because they pay attention to the other interviews, and the other interviews, I'm off the rails, I'm telling people clear concise exactly what I plan to do. I'm not living by the hope factor. That's for you Democrats. I'm living by, I wish you would screw over the American people. Now, this town hall is about criminal justice reform. And yesterday having a family night, we put on the Brian Banks story. It was touching. And what it says is liberals been screwing up America for quite some time and when they get caught they don't own it they try to buy it off doesn't that sound like Ralph Northam and the blackface and the KKK doesn't that sound like what the NAACP was doing for the other races cut us a check and we'll make sure the racism go away that's that hope factor and while your supporters they are hoping that there would be change. They're hoping things would get better. Like I said, Rutledge campaign's different. I wish you would screw over the American people. I wish you would screw over 2A. I wish you would screw over criminal justice reform. I wish you would screw over religion. I wish you would screw over freedom of speech and freedom of assembly. That's called, I wish you would screw over the people because there's going to be consequences. I hope doesn't come with consequences. All I hope comes with is basically saying, I'm getting screwed over again, and I hope the screw over isn't as bad as the last time. That's that hope factor. So, now I'm seeing on the TV screens this NASCAR person. What in the world? See, people mowing lawns right now, this ain't the right time to do it. I know they have to do their job, but oh well, I'm going to keep this town hall going. So please bear with me and the mower or whatever. I may have to shut them up. Now, to get to this point, the NASCAR person, Bubba Wallace, I think that's his name. The Hope person. The Democratic liberal screw-over machine. The Hope back now with that being in mind he says let that mower go across 
anyway, like I told you, y'all hearing from me behind the scenes, and y'all always hear from me 100% of the time. So, Bubba Wallace says a noose was found in his garage somewhere, and this is the major guy trying to get rid of the Confederate flags, which has been NASCAR for I don't know how long. And I'm like, all of a sudden, it's a problem today, but you've been riding around that track with all that going on, getting all the stardom, all the spotlight, all the uh, uh, all all the fame, and all of a sudden, the Confederate flag now bothers you after riding around in NASCAR for decades. Probably your family and the rest for decades. Now, a noose is found in your garage, and I read the article on the liberal media, and this tells me the same thing because other people was catching on to it. I said, well, this is NASCAR. I know their cars and their equipment are very valuable, and I know insurance companies normally require you to have some kind of surveillance or whatever to show what happens if there is an incident on one of your cars, at your place, whatever it may be, because one of the major things about NASCAR is to protect your vehicle. So you're saying, Bubba Wallace, while I'm reading this whole article, because this is what I do, the liberal article, you're saying a noose was put in there, we don't have a description of the suspect, and we have no mention that video surveillance tapes have been pulled, and they put a noose inside your garage, the only person's garage in NASCAR, and None of this is in the paper. When anything else happens, we have a description of the suspect. We have video surveillance. Whether they release it, they say we got video and other evidence. The only thing I see is a liberal telling police and telling NASCAR and telling America, I'm trying to fan the flames. But there should at least be a description. Whether the person's wearing a mask or whatever, it should be a description. From video surveillance, showing the end time in which this news was put there and what and what they was saying. I don't see that. So that kind of lets me know the race baiting is going strong all over the place and all this madness. So I said to myself, this sounds like Jimmy Smollett. I don't care how I pronounce his name, it doesn't even matter. It smells like Chicago. And we know all that's wrong with Chicago. And another city with liberal leadership this smells like uh, a fake scene a stage scene to fan the flames of racism because it sells and it's highly beneficial for certain people's careers because they hope we don't catch the bullshit and Republicans we catch the bullshit don't we don't you smell Bubba Wallace coming out to be a Jimmy Smollett yes I do and I said, this is the problem with the criminal justice system. And every American can agree. Black, white, Hispanic, doesn't matter who you are. I always tell people I'm talking to the American people because I'm an American. And I said this. I said, criminal justice reform has to stop or start in reverse with us. We are the reason why the criminal justice system even exists. We have to file the complaints. We have to file the lawsuits. We have to go to the police to do the report. That starts the criminal justice process or a police investigation in matters that deal with whatever they specialize in. That starts the criminal justice system. But where I smolder and burn and get heated and pissed off because so many are disrespecting hard-working Americans and those who fought blood, sweat, and tears for America that goes to a system to lie to the system that's been lying to America for quite some time. See, people ain't looking at that part. So, if you give the lie to a system that celebrates lies, and fake news. Then, if that system has a better interest in that person mutually, it seems like those are the ones who are wrongfully in prison. 
and those where there's no interest but justice are rightly so and deserve their punishment. See, it's more to criminal justice system than thinking one race is being conquered or being disproportionate or being by large demographic or criminal justice. The criminal justice system is what you created. Juries, when they give out verdicts, that's people bringing down judgment. The people are what they represent, but it's not the people own the story. When there's a lie, they get always one side of the story. But you put both sides to the story and you look right in the middle, you see exactly the bullshit down the line. That's just like our kids coming up to us trying to make an excuse. And we know we've been at their age before. We know what we lied about before. And we can tell you lying because certain things don't add up because kids ain't that good at hiding. We got too many kids in politics. That's what we got. We got too many kids trying to set the grown-ups table in politics. And they don't understand they need to grow up because the criminal justice system started with us because it's too easy for people to blame everybody else. That's what people do. They blame everybody else for their responsibility. They didn't. But it's easier when we assign it to somebody else because we hope it's, it's worthy or it's in some kind of way beneficial to us. So like I said, Bubba Wallace, I smell big racism. Now after that, Confederate flags, American flags, whatever flag you want, fly in that. You got to fly high because sometimes it's naked, the person spreading the venom. It's a little different because Merle Rush don't think the same way as other politicians. I've been not a politician, but I've been people's asses like that. Play on American people. That's why I say I, I don't hope. I wish you would be lying about this. Now, to go on to my criminal justice reform, because I had to get that out of the way because it pissed me off this morning. After I was watching my TV show, it was the Brian Banks story. Then got me remembering my good friend, Donald Lane, who's stuck in prison right now, hoping to be free after evidence has came forward that police didn't want to give up, that said that a murder was linked to another man. Then I looked at several different other cases, and people don't realize this about Merle Rutledge. I get a lot of phone calls, and a lot of them, there's five different cases I know of that have never been prosecuted, but I know the DA or the Commonwealth attorney knows exactly the victims is lying. Let me, and this ain't just a black problem, people. This ain't just a black problem. Trust me on that part, because a lot of these cases, four of them are with white males, low income, and couldn't afford legal representation, just like so many other Americans out there in this world. But they initially thought, because I was a civil rights activist, I only helped black people. When they found out quickly, I don't care who you are. If you're being done wrong, like I said, under Obama, you can hope you'll get fair play. Under Rutledge, I wish somebody would be screwing you over as I find out they're lying. See, the difference. So, then I hear from the accusers who have already had these men convicted in in jail right now serving some life sentences right now and the accusers called me up trying to figure out what they can do to get somebody out of jail who they wrongfully had convicted they went through the process they testified in the court of law led to that man's conviction or that woman's conviction. One is a woman. I'm going to tell y'all that. And now that person sits in prison. Now, each and every one of them, I have asked the same question. 
That's how bad the criminal justice system is because of us. Then us trickles down into the prosecutor's office, the public defender's office, and judges. One thing we forgot about, those same people bleed just like us, think like us, dress like us, look like us. In some kind of way, they are man or woman. So uh, I'm not sure transsexual. Don't want to piss any of y'all off. I heard y'all was pissed off at somebody lately. Anyway, anyway, they have the same type of motives when it comes down to personal interests, just like you do. So if they don't want to help somebody, they ain't going to help them if it ain't beneficial to them, even if the evidence supports the other side. So I get told by each and every one of them because I get them confidentiality. I always agree to that because the fact that I'm hearing what I need to hear. Sometimes I can find out hearing that you can lead me in another direction to get the truth. But I can't do that if I close my ears and close my eyes and say I turn a lot of so I hear them out. You should have one of them. women say their boyfriend, their Friend, their husband, or some associate they had a relationship with because they lied to the court. And they say afterwards they felt bad and tried to go to the Commonwealth attorney and to the public defender to say they lied. After they say they lied, this is the shocking thing. At that point, it should be enough. They tell them. If you recant your story, we will charge you with perjury, and you can face up to ten years in prison. So not only are they trying to come forward, the prosecutor is telling them, if you say what you just told me, and supposed to go over to the defense attorney, we gonna punish you. For doing so, all at the same time, Frank, there's no guarantee. So, right, that the judge buys it, and guess who's the judge that normally gets the case? The same judge that could have personal motive or interest in the case is the same one who had to decide and tell himself he's wrong. And we have the hope of the Obama. Remember the hope part. We have to hope he calls for justice and the verdict worthy of the public's confidence. But me, Rutledge, I wish you would pull out that verdict and now I'm governor to correct it. Because the other ones didn't do the job. And thankfully, we have leaders like President Trump and the Republican Party who is cleaning up a mess. Mind you people who are Democrats. He is fixing the mess that Obama could have fixed in the last eight years in Democrats when they had House, Senate, and the presidency. Even though he ran on the ticket of criminal justice reform, there's no comparison. That was to stop the race crap. No comparison of what President Trump did in his first two years. Really, more for a criminal justice reform the Obama and Democrats in their last eight years add Virginia to it the last decade. But all of a sudden now they care because they see George Floyd's death. But George Floyd's death they're happening all across America to people of different backgrounds and walks of life. This is one of the few times the video has made it out there so people can go ahead and get an informed decision. I'm giving you an informed decision about what's really going on in the criminal justice system. Because what I'm talking about is reform. The first thing I just said is us. Two, stop making false complaints and reports. Three, people are in jail and they have to stay in jail knowing that they are innocent and the person who accused them is innocent. And then we have Commonwealth attorneys knowing and hearing a lie, but at the same time frame, has self-interest because they the ones who got that conviction. 
they don't want to look wrong. Who in the right frame of mind knows the criminal justice system is really based off of I do not want to be wrong. Judges, I don't want to be wrong because I don't want pill to come down because that's a slap in my face. Isn't it the same thing for most people? That's the problem with the criminal justice system. We never held them accountable for the standards and those candidates that they accept and take because there was nothing to enforce. Just like it was to enforce people to come forward very often walk away with no consequence. Brian Banks was an example of that. But I also put up posts on my Facebook to show the examples of people of different backgrounds that's facing the same criminal justice system under the same conditions. And I'm sad for these people because I know I'm hearing from the victim. And they're still locked up in prison when they get out of jail. Brian Banks said it exactly. After jail, I still am in the prison. Because you got to go through all this red, red tape, even though you know you're innocent. And I know too many people all walks of life have somebody that they know is in jail. That has no business being there. And they know the person accuses them. Their motive is impure. And their friends that know that person knows that they're lying. Because they normally bragging to them about what they did to somebody else. How they ruin lives. So should I pity the people? who go out there and give out a false story? No. But I do believe we need to punish the prosecutors who has somebody come in their office and say, I was lying. But due to the fact I responded by the fact of threatening you, you can't come forward with the truth. But at the same time, I'm worried about looking wrong. Who's up in the where they're looking wrong. And we got innocent people in jail because people are worried about looking wrong, not looking for justice. That's the truth of the matter. And far too often, I tell people, see, Obama hoped the problem would go away and America get better by a few speeches. I wish somebody would screw over America with a few speeches. Obama compared to Rutledge, Rutledge compared to Democrats, Republicans compared to Democrats, but some of you rhinos that's Republicans, trust me, I don't care anything about you. Establishments. I'm telling you straight up, you can't tell me how to talk, how to walk, how to act. They get that out the way. When I come to a meeting, like I said, I'm bringing it raw, I'm bringing it real, and I'm not going to give a damn about your feelings because my country's too important. Back to the point. Now, I brought this situation up, and this is what the papers don't write. That's why I said be careful of the liberal media. A man asked me a question. He said, in your criminal justice, why are you requiring the mandatory testing of DNA upon request compared to waiting for a judge's decision to decide on it? Because I said I want the innocent to go out of jail and move on with their life and the guilty to start coming back into jail to take their damn place. That's why. And also when I found out that a lot of y'all, and I hope for y'all that y'all never have this happen where you have a family member, a loved one, in the criminal justice system where DNA is being applied, where it's being testified to by lab rats called liberals. The experts that read the DNA and give out their results to a judge. Do you know in Virginia and how many and I'm gonna say it's scary. How many people have pled guilty and their lawyers or the Commonwealth attorney did not adequately let them know what those DNA results really meant. Do you know this is a problem that Rutledge will fix because he guarantees it. Do you know that if a man that is white, a man that is black, a man that's Hispanic, doesn't matter, that the DNA results that are used in our trials, even to this day, 
only says really they cannot exclude you because of your race from the DNA sample. So if somebody else commits this race, I mean rape or murder, and they're white, and you're white, that DNA result that Virginia does so cheaply only says you can't be excluded from the DNA sample because you're white. And the real rapist is white. But you're pleading guilty because they're making you believe that DNA result was really a match for you. If it's a match on the results, it will say how many people out of this demographic, all that fancy paperwork that says exactly more conclusive or the billion of a probability that this DNA is your DNA. Meaning you. Your name next to it, DNA. Not, we can't exclude you because since the rapist is white from what we know about the DNA and you're white, I'm going to tell the judge that. And the jury has been buying that BS. That's why, in some kind of way, I think we have to have a test of jurors in some kind of way to see if they adequately understand what this crap is coming out of their mouth. These liberals, Northern administration on overdrive after winning the last eight, eight years, decade. Politician, look at our lives now. And you talking about criminal justice reform? We already built your prison without a charge. That's the truth, people. That's why people so frustrated with the criminal justice system because nobody's talking like this. You know, they ain't ready for that because they haven't been in those shoes. I've been there. I've seen the exact results of this. And I've seen the harm done to so many Virginia families where there are family members and loved ones and their family members they didn't do it and their family members don't realize the DNA results didn't say your son did it or your daughter did it. All it said that it's somebody the same race. That's what's in jail. But when they do the more advanced testing, that's when all, all the oh, DNA is it's some illegal out there in North Dakota who travel across the southern border into Virginia and after they did a murder here, go to South Dakota to make sure they don't get caught. See the point? And during this time period, they are telling these families, and that loved one is really telling the truth, and they don't have a clue because everybody made them believe the liberal hoax that what we call a criminal justice system and a fair trial. And now people are smelling the BS. Virginia doesn't fix it because it's liberals. They cover it up. You try to tell me both the Democrats really care about criminal justice reform? I just told you that. You're black. And the person who murdered somebody is black, but you can't be excluded because you're black, not because you did the crime. That's what you holding people on because the state can't afford it. And the only time frame they can is when they have to be said, oh, we was wrong. See, that's the Obama hope factor. He did none of this. He didn't pass no law. Democrats didn't pass no law. They didn't pass no real police reform. Nothing. But now they kneeling in African garb saying vote for us because we've been screwing y'all over. This is the next act. But all we're doing is showing you a, a different play but we're going to give you the same bullshit that screwed over America. That's the thing that Republicans and Trump is trying to stop. What we try to do is fix the problem that they have long ignored. We get the blame for it because they play in the next act while we actually committing to action. But you'll see it through all the smoke and mirrors as more and more wake up to the reality of what's really going on here in America. The criminal justice system was based off the swamp and the swamp doesn't like like they are. Most of the, most of the animals in the swamp are cold-blooded. I'm just a cold-blooded Republican. For right calls. That's why they're so scary as Democrats.
because they're like, even from the news, the media, you ask them, why ain't you reporting? Because he ain't a politician. Why ain't you reporting him? Well, he ain't a sitting senator. Why ain't you reporting him? Because he's grassroots. But they're all paying attention to him. They're trying to figure out how to spend it. Because, like I said, the last come first. The best comes last. And that's exactly what they're saying to American people. The more I'm on the road, me and person after person, and having real conversations with them like this on our system. Now, like I said, I brought up Brian Banks. Brought up Donald Lane. I brought up fake rapes. I brought up the corruption behind those who want to come forward. I brought up the fact that they should be punished. But I'm also bringing up the fact that it will become a requirement when a victim changes their story, whether they testify in court, testify to their friend, testify to in, you know, in church. Not in church, I'm just playing with that one. You know I love my separation of state. <laughs> church and state, I love it. But at the same time here, what I'm saying here, we will have law in which evidence whether it could be admissible or inadmissible. Because I care about Virginians. All Virginians. That evidence will be allowed into a court of law if it tends to show that the victim or the accuser is lying regardless of where it came from. And the source is supposed to be vetted out for authenticity. We don't need any more wasteful spending that's conservative trait on people wrongfully in jail based off of all those conditions i mentioned i also require mandatory dna testing so no american feels that when they get in the court system and they're blindsided they know that justice is going to be applied adequately and hopefully they don't have to take a part in it as a defense on the line that protects everyone not just those who are selfish also having a database of those who recant or those who lie on police and citizens we will have a database for that in the criminal justice system which has long not been applied because a lot of time frame they don't turn over the fact this person is a liar unless they've been adjudicated in court to be a liar because most of their liars is called criminal informants yeah most of them and any criminal informant can no longer be used if they continue in crimes after the fact. Because we are not going to have police departments or even civilians do RICO in our criminal justice system and think because they're in uniform or they are a consummate liar that they're going to have, say, passes. That's Democrat Obama hope. Nah, Rutledge pleasing, I wish you would do exactly that and mess over the American people. That's my motto. And during that time period, that database will be allowed to be released to defendants who come into the Virginia court system and should be applied federally as it applies to states. Because we all know too many liars and we know too many liars that have people in jail right now and they can't do nothing about it because they can't testify to it or they're not knowledgeable on how to go about correcting the wrong. We're making sure we even the playing field so we can believe in the justice system, that all people can believe in the justice system. Even as you are a rich millionaire in your luxury house, you don't plan to be in the court system, but we see y'all in there too. When you want to make sure that you are treated right and not ambushed by trial, because most of the people that scare the court system right now are the very ones who don't ever want a part of it. But they hope when they get there, if it ever happens, that they can prove themselves quickly and go back home. Too often, we know that all sides of the justice system, whether it's police or ordinary citizens, are able to know whether that person is lying and why. We need to make sure that our justice system is not just some hearsay organization that based off a of hearsay, not off of fact and evidence. 
hearsay is what somebody told you that you didn't hear for yourself. And too often it's used in the court system to apply towards the verdict that the court wants. They allow whatever hearsay that they think and their narrative fits them. But sometimes it's the hearsay that shows that that person is lying as well. Also, I want a complete review of the rape shield law based off of so many wrongful convictions. We must look at the background and the ideology of whether the rape shield law is adequate and fairly applied today. Where we can protect the victim, but we also can make sure that defendants also have a fair trial. So I would love to look at the rules of evidence when it comes down to what we allow in charge uh, in cases as far as rape cases and murder cases. There's not going to be a sexual assault organization that will be too far against that. The only reason is because too often, if I'm hearing it just myself in no five cases, imagine how many they know about that they don't come forward with also because they still protect a, a victim, even though it ain't a victim itself. Even though they ain't a victim itself. I can't stand this lawnmower. Maybe that lawnmower is a Democrat. So, after it's all said and done, we will have a better criminal justice system. We will, just like police officers, have a new informational educational learning classes from elementary to middle school to high school of how citizens are to interact with police and exactly the same thing being taught by police so when police know that they taught a class of how to interact with police officers they know that class knew that lesson and they can look at their grades and they can tell whether a complaint is coming from merit from the source or whether somebody was asleep that day in class because guess what if you was asleep that day you probably locked up and admitted to everything and also probably resisted the arrest but if we start making that mandatory class and take out the pedophile class we all know that's being peddled in elementary schools and say how all citizens should interact with the police and vice versa police saying how we should interact with you citizens will build trust with the police department and the community because they're having the police teach the class and also have in that class lawyers to come to that class and educate our youth on what is being the definition of a law abiding citizen now at home we will not interfere with the parents. The parents have a right to discipline. Like I said, I can't believe how far we have came in Virginia where we can't give our kids a spanking. On the Merle Rutledge administration, the Obama hoped lessening the discipline would make for more education. Now, my forefathers and my grandfather and the rest and my dad and the rest, they didn't hope I straightened up. They wished I would mess up so they know that I knew the consequences of my actions. We need to start taking more acceptance and more responsibility for the consequences of our actions. This is when we start seeing the criminal justice system begin to work with more integrity and more character because we are requiring a higher bar for the criminal justice system, but I'm also requiring a higher bar to us as citizens, we must be informed. And we can only do that when we put the responsibility with ourselves and don't give our lives or hand it over to other people who ain't or who can uh, other lack of or disregard for our welfare. That's the criminal justice system I'm trying to fix. Second chances to those who need it. Second chances to nonviolent felons to get their firearms without having to go through judicial process, but administrative process, where once they meet the conditions, they become immediately eligible. See, with me, I'm a different type of politician. I talk real. You can't ask these questions to the, the politicians. They'll stutter and say, we're looking to that. 
be careful, police officers, when you do an endorsement and somebody says, we're looking to give you more pay. We are looking to helping you out. Look at how the Democrats helped you out for the last eight years. And just because you stood up for our constitutional rights, didn't they make sure you didn't get a pay raise? And guess what? Wasn't the same politicians in office at the time frame while this was going on? Like I said, my whole uh, law enforcement, you can't hope my opponents do something for you. You can't hope. I said, I wish politicians now screw over all of Virginia citizens. I wish you would because you are guaranteed a pay raise based off of your job and your performance and also your merit. And for you standing up for our constitutional rights, you will not be penalized. You will be honored and celebrated. And there will be a holiday for y'all taking a stand for our rights, our two-way rights here in Virginia. And you will be honored because that was another battle that y'all were on the front lines with all the 2A directly. I'm not about criminal justice reform without rewarding those who practice our criminal justice system fairly equally and without no hesitation regardless of those backgrounds or those accolades that come from those that may harm you. You deserve to be honored. Now, on to more parts of the criminal justice system that I say we must stop appointing judges. Judges have become campaign donors. Anytime I go to court, I look at a judge that's been appointed. I say, campaign donor, how much trust can I have in you as a campaign donor that didn't earn your position? Bought it. That's why justice is so corrupt. So I would make mandatory elections and make sure the Republicans make sure this bill passed and I'll get the Democrats on board. If they don't like it, they know why we end up doing to them. And I will put them on blast and let them know their campaign donors is your judges. They don't like to be called out and exposed. Let's be honest. Democrats don't like that. Brothers are fine with being exposed because brothers don't care because I expose you the same way 20 times on. We got to stop having... Lawyers buy their seats by giving campaign donations to politicians that are favorable to recommend their name. And each time I see these politicians, each time I see these judges, I see that there's been a nice campaign donation made to that politician. Or by their local bar or committee that slips in a nice conversation. I think this guy would be a good pick without realizing they pay for their office and funded all their bullshit. That has to stop. We are going to start elected by people, by the sisters, their own judges. So they can say, we picked our judge, we follow our judge, and we respect our judge. Make the call, whether it is adverse to our opinion. That's how we fix the justice system. Open file discovery, making sure defendants and prosecutors have the same access to the same evidence, and have the same access to the same police officers investigating, and the same access to interviewing witnesses. We will not just be handing out a, your criminal record and having prosecutors decide on what is favorable evidence to give over to the defense attorney, which may prove them wrong. Even though it proves them wrong and lets them know who they're representing is a class A liar, they're too busy worrying about what it looks like if it was wrong. Because when the newspapers reported it, when the media was all on it, they had their statements of what all the trash talking that came from arms of the Commonwealth, all the trash talking that came from the defendant's table. And in between that one, they got pride. We got to get pride out of the criminal justice system and justice back in. That's how we fix the problems going on in the criminal justice system. We got to start making sure petty offenses no longer have lifelong consequences for those who have worked hard to make sure 
that Dayton no longer was a criminal but became a law abiding citizen and been consistent on that for years and decades. How long do they have to wait before they're out of a prison of what they made as a mistake as a nonviolent offender? That's why I recommend getting rid of marijuana convictions. Even nonviolent offenses where their records could be expunged and through hard work and dedication and educational awareness and understanding that they have proved to society that they have paid their debt. Now it's time for them to move on free of that debt, but now on to prosperous lives so we can see that they are a testimony for those in the criminal justice system. We can't do that if we continue 30 years later to tell a grandmother now at her age a mistake that she made as 15 or 16 should still be on the record having her have a hard time get a job anymore. but during that time frame after her record or conviction she spent the rest of her life being law abiding raising five kids raising their grandkids being a leader in her community and also living an exceptional and exemplary life but too bad she's 65 and still has to put shoplifting at 18 on their record and have to hope this person realizes 30 years ago the person in front of them is definitely not the same person that they see in that record see what i'm saying my policies work for everybody it's socialism because see socialism wants a hand to you see that's the obama i, I hope this is the moral Rutledge. I wish you will would screw over the American people. See, that's ways to fix criminal justice system. You ask these other politicians how they gonna fix it. Well, we are looking to this. We may we may help you if we get a campaign donation. Sorry, like my other opponent, I will never accept twenty thousand dollars for an issue that's in my heart and soul. I was ashamed to see the fact that anybody needs that much money to fight for our constitutional rights. Because criminal justice reform is our constitutional rights on the line. That's why it's so important for us to be aware and look at ways to make sure our lives are better for our generations because they have to deal with our consequence or our ignorance to it. That's the fact. And I want them to be prepared. And I want law enforcement to be prepared and know with confidence that the person that they are locking up committed the crime without a question, beyond reasonable doubt. And I want citizens to know that they have a fair shot at the justice system. But if you commit the crime, you will do the time because we now know we are confident in the outcomes of the verdicts that are handed down by the American people. Our justice system is far different than what it is today. You're not getting executed on the streets. You're getting in trial. But they not. We've seen time over time that those who claim innocent and claim this case, even being wrongfully locked up, if we came at a price of them still maintaining their innocence. Battles and wars that people would never see and hope, pray to God that you never is in that situation. But pray to God also that there's somebody being mindful of that situation and you are fair not to prove yourself when the courts come. That's why I plan to have a task force with teeth in five different areas of Virginia within two hour driving distances. But we have retired detectives and volunteers, retired public defenders and more, where we also tag team with the Innocence Project to look into cases for justice, not for technicalities, for justice, then their teeth will have strength, not opinions. Because their recommendations and their teeth will come to me with the ability to know that I've appointed the very best to report to me for justice. That's going to be the goal of the criminal justice system under Merle Rutledge. Swift justice. Pedophiles will have mandatory sentences because we're going to be able to prove with swift justice you're guilty. Murderers will not have safe haven 
with doubt, notifying prosecutors and attorneys of their release, which hasn't been done under the coronavirus. And I'll tell you like this, if the death penalty is applied, i say this is a campaign loss. If the death penalty is applied, me as governor is going to pull the switch. That's a fact. Because I said, I don't want people to do the job that I signed off the death warrant to. And not know or take responsibility that that person in that chair, that person getting that lethal injection or whatever. I take the consequence if that man is innocent. I take the consequence if that man is guilty. But you won't die as some stranger's hands who has to go home and sleep with the fact that they possibly may have killed somebody innocent or applied justice, but the T PTSD of what they see from man dying. I'm a real patriot. If I make that call, I will personally carry out the execution. I would live by exactly what I say and exactly what I preach in policy and in life and public service. You're not getting a perfect Christian. And I'll tell you, anybody tell you, all my speeches says exactly I'm not the perfect Christian because I know I have to get my hands dirty. God didn't say be polite to Merle Rutledge. God said for Merle Rutledge to do what's in the best interest of the Virginia people and show a beam of light that America will continue to become great again under the solid leadership of the Republican Party and, of course, President Trump and, of course, backing up our Constitution with cement. Not with just what can be broken down any time period because our politicians don't believe in it. That's criminal justice reform. Now, I tell people, if you can find somebody better right now, you have every opportunity to ask them right now, who are you? We know who Rutledge is because Rutledge is basically saying it the way it is and not holding back and he got a plan. Can you tell me your plan? I don't care if they're Democrat, Republican, or Independent. This is for those communities that's been asking for the addressing of criminal justice reform by anyone who is asking for leadership and pushing a duty and respect to uphold the Constitution and maintain everybody's human fundamental rights. Because we loosen them day by day. We loosen exactly what America was working on and building for a more perfect union is being broken by the chips and broken by a system that has opened up cracks so far out there to the point it's leaking all over the place. That's the crisis we have right now, not the coronavirus. We have a crisis in leadership. We have a crisis and politicians doing exactly what they say that they're going to do. That's why Rutledge got into this race. We have a duty to protect our most vulnerable. Those who are sexually assaulted, guaranteed, they going to get the mandatory sentence for violating. They won't get excuses and grandeur. Because that mandatory sentence sends us clear message. If you screw over, I wish you would screw over the American people and hurt our children. I will come down hard. That's exactly the type of governor Virginia needs. Not those who are okay with six months Brock Turner like sentences while your daughter gets raped. While your daughter gets murdered. But the justice system on the rubbish would be strong enough to protect the victim and prosecute the enemy. That's exactly how I look at it. What you want me to call you a criminal? No, I call you the enemy. Any time frame you attack the American people for unjust reasons. You are the enemy. You're hurting our more perfect union. You are trying to destroy it. We can all live with symbols of our history, our monuments, and preserve those documents and those moments 
and events in history that change all walks of life. Sadly, too many are trying to take away what is the history of even those who are wrongfully convicted. Take away the history that led to us being more perfect union. Take away a history that people tell you to remember so you don't repeat. See, the criminal justice system, one thing I've learned through all, all this time, and this is the last one I'm going to pretty much say on it. Through all the cases, all the investigations, anybody on the South Side, everybody knows. Me. You know, I look for justice. It's mental illness and our educational system which promotes the criminal justice system in all forms. What you teach, not just in the classroom, but what you teach at home has the most adverse effect on the criminal justice system and why it is in shambles today. Most of the people that I meet, whether they inmates or more, what, what some of the things they have in common. They didn't finish school. They wasn't encouraged to learn. They could barely read and write. They don't have dispute resolution skills. They don't have job maturity skills. They was born most of the time frame into families or situations of I don't care. They may have not been aborted through birth, but they was aborted through life. That's the sad thing about our criminal justice system that nobody wants to talk about. They was aborted in life. That's why they have no care. And when you read the viciousness of their crimes for those who commit the most atrocious acts, it's hard to understand. It is hard to understand that we are not addressing mental illness from the start and providing more services. Because right now, we all mentally ill from being locked down. We all have suffered. They have suffered decades. And they wasn't in jail or a prison cell to do so. So, when I look at the criminal justice system, mental illness and providing adequate treatment and training and making sure that the services is available would be a top priority. Criminal justice system cannot have justice and have it applied fairly until we address mental illness and have the youth that come into its grips trained and aware of what they could have done not and what they could do to never ever have to say a day in jail. That's how we make our justice system a lot more stronger. Okay, now I'm going to the town hall. So I'm finished with speech. I'm going to look at all the questions that came up because a lot of this time I'm just catching up with a lot of stuff so of course People are getting straight answer on the criminal justice system. I believe most people never expected that to come out of my mouth. But like I said, I'm not a typical politician. So as far as it's concerned, I'm doing the wave and I'm going to go down the question and answer. So if you got a question about the criminal justice system, you can ask me. I'm going to do a 10 minute. If I need to go a little bit longer, y'all can see me waving. And I want y'all to have as many questions as you want to have during this time period. So y'all can get the nice garden up my wife. So that kind of answers the question for one of y'all who asked that question. Yes, me and my wife are still together. Business. So that answers your question. And yeah, as far as I'm concerned, it's really none of nobody's business. Then that's how I'm going to answer that question each and every single time. Now, let's get to it. Now, my wife actually asked the question, so I guess you get the answer right now. Need a database for it all. With police brutality and false accusations made for mother. 
Okay, I actually answered that question in regards to um, a database in regards to those who repeatedly lie. A lot of time frames you won't see in the criminal justice system unless the person has been convicted of lying. A lot of time frames they give no processing cue or whatever. And from my experience dealing with the criminal justice system, all it does is keep people from being put on the public record. It's like basically we won't rule on the case. They can bring it back, but whatever is known in the prosecution's case or the uh, defense case that hasn't already been filed in court. If they decide not, not to press charges on this person for a filing police report or whatever, allegations sometimes don't make it into discovery that this person has been alleged to do this. You ain't already see that in discovery. But if that person has been convicted of filing a uh, false report or perjury uh, or lying to a grand jury and they've been convicted, and that's why I tell people don't fall for that trap of uh, saying, please know you lied. This person, if it's not in the court record, it, another person is going to probably have to deal with that liar. So be mindful as far as being part of the public to be mindful that you have a duty to know whether this person is lying and to come forward with it. Like I said, with criminal informants, like, like I said, that whole program is changing. Confidential informants, that's changing. Because we can't have Rico drug dealers like we can't have Rico bad police like we can't have since looting and murdering and doing what practice. Uh, well, Rico is basically a person or persons who make a criminal enterprise out of crime, and what happens is police fall. Good neck and neck, citizens too, gangs and all that other stuff. It's not, not just that. And the further in criminal enterprise, and the confidential informant program has further criminal enterprise. And I feel that if you are um, a confidential informant, you have to stop the criminal activity after you testify in the case. But as you continue to do so, you won't get the immunity or, or break that police are typically able to give you for testifying or bringing out information like that. Because I find far too often we have a Chesapeake out. The Ryan Frederick case, a lot of people don't know about the case. This is like Brianna, uh, Briante Teller. This happened here in Chesapeake. And it's the same thing with the no knock warrant. And instead of a citizen dying, a police officer died in that. In other states, they actually have immunity for those who shoot unannounced police. In our state, we had that happen. It's one of the cases that really bothers me because he was a law-abiding gun owner. Um, he didn't know police was going to do that. But because of a confidential informant that was known to lie, had broken into the subject's house, which made him extra alert, this is what happened. If the guy's name is Turnbull or something like that. It's the case I lose sleep to this day over. I can tell you that one. Because it's scary to know that you didn't mean to shoot a cop, but days prior, your house was broken into by the very confidential informant who told police that drugs was being sold from the house. There was no surveillance on the house to see if that activity was going. They found dirt of marijuana, meaning like little debris. It wasn't no marijuana growing operation, but it was clear that this confidential informant didn't know enough drug dealers. So he was going after those he, who made smoke marijuana. But other than that, may have not been a trade because most marijuana dealers have a boatload of marijuana if they have a plant of marijuana in the house they have plants but yes it was a no-knock warrant y'all can look up this case it's ryan frederick he spent 10 years in prison um was found guilty and i'm talking about she followed this case for 2a 2a that's the case about the castle doctrine why i'm so strong for it in the stand your ground law and I'm so strong about also having the commission to reevaluate self-defense cases, whether a woman stabbed somebody who was brutally attacking them or whether a homeowner shot somebody in their house and they claimed self-defense and just didn't get a fair shake with prosecutors. But had they lived in a different area of Virginia, would have gotten a fair shake and probably the charges dismissed. So what we're doing now for 2A, especially, that's one that actually uh, uh, cementing of, on the foundation for 2A um, is to have the castle doctrine 
have to stay in ground law, but it's not enough for me to, to fix it for the future. We have to fix it for those who have been through the system and that um, they was wrongfully convicted and had this evidence been presented to a jury that was more educated and informed. I do want to test some of these cases by the degree of education, to be honest with you, and see if it would be a different outcome. I would be all for doing a study in regards to that with all states being on board. Virginia is no longer taking the full price tag of studies anymore, just like the casinos or like the flooding. We pay millions and millions of dollars for studies, but we don't have little to do with construction on the actual project that we're doing studies for. We are no longer going to waste money like that. And that's what I mean. Basically, we're going back to fix the history that we should have fixed a long time ago. And had we known what we knew today, and that's the thing, stop blaming all the stuff on the past. Because right now, if we had known what we knew today, about our criminal justice system and technology, a lot of people would not be in jail to this day. And some of it also deals with bad paperwork. Some of it deals with intentional bad paperwork from prosecutors, police, and bad paperwork from public defenders. Because a lot of these public defenders had people in their plea deals that they was aware at the time frame that there would be an increase of punishment. And then got surprised when the judge handed down the sentence. Far too often, there's no remedy for it unless you can have a good lawyer to convince judges that you had ineffective assistance of counsel. I think by doing this, it has extra layers of protection for our justice system to seek justice. Like I said, anything that applies for injustices that can be abused. That's where the problem's going to come into play. Like our Constitution is a living document, our criminal justice system must be a living document because it deals with our civil rights and our freedoms. Because when our freedom is taken away, normally the justice system is a method of doing so. So, so I'm looking down the next question. I'm still answering everybody's question. Okay, Debbie Torrance. Actually, I'm going to read your question out because, you know what, this will help me not to have to keep bringing, asking, being, you know, ask that question. But at the same time, I'm too real of a patriot not to answer questions. That's one of the things about you going to get your questions answered, whether I like it or not. You know what I'm saying? That's part of politics. That's why I told people when people said, oh, you're attacking other people. And you you hitting 20 times harder. I'm like, once you get into politics, you're fair play. You know, we don't attack somebody unless they attack us. And just like Donald Trump, we hit 20 times harder. We had Kathy Griffin, you know, holding his head with blood underneath. You know what I'm saying? As a threat or a symbol of how much you can't stand Donald Trump. And Rosie O'Donnell, all the Stormy Daniels, all of them. I'm like, realistically, grow up. We all adults. And two at the same time period. This is a good question to answer. I just want to bring up a few examples because that's just me. Now, is Risa Renee still your wife? If so, how can you be married to someone who is trying to destroy you from becoming a Republican governor? I'm so confused at this moment. Please help me understand what's going on. Number one, let's get this straight. Debbie Torrance, this is directly an answer for you. Nobody can destroy anybody, just like nobody can destroy you. Just because people have different views politically on certain issues, that's just like anybody else in this world. There are people who will disagree with how breakfast is made and say you should use a little bit more um, salt on the eggs. Let's be honest. You don't expect to agree at all time frames. I'm a patriot. I'm not weak. I'm not soft. I'm not a milkshake. I'm not a rhino. You can never destroy me. If all that I've been through hasn't destroyed me, I'm like, this is a walk in the park. But the answer to that question, yes, she is my wife. Do we agree about everything politically? No. Do I listen to my wife just like I listen to all of Virginia about their views and opinions? If they make a good call, I'm going to agree. 
if they don't make a good call and I disagree, I'm going to stand my ground and hold to my guns because it's in the best interest of Virginia, my country, not in the best interest of self. There's a difference. So we don't have to agree. No, we are not perfect. Nobody is perfect. Only person I found out that's perfect is God. And God told me to be in this race. God didn't say it's going to be easy. God said it's going to be hard. You're going to be tested. Your friends is going to become your enemies. Those who support you are going to walk away against you. And those who are meant to be taught an important lesson for doing so is going to still have your back because they're going to see the results that you are changing Virginia and you're changing uh, the way America does business in one state and showing other states how to get the job done. That's exactly what I'm here for. So as I'm too weak or so to let any kind of liberal news come out there about me, I don't deserve to be governor. Let's be honest. So as far as any other questions, like I said, my 10 minutes is up, and I wanted to make sure that question was answered. And also, Debbie Torrance, thank you for that question. Do not think I'm being harsh on you by far, but I'm to let you know this is not the typical politician. Now, Melissa Walmack, the reason why I brought you up, and I'm glad you up on the show and why you was tagged, because Melissa Walmack has been working for a break. Breaking the Silence organization. If you want to have a real deal conversation about me, I would say Melissa Walmack can represent that 100% on how I fight for sexual assault advocates. She can also tell you when I disagree and feel like sudden ain't adding up. She'll tell you I'm going to be straight hitting hard on what I disagree with. But she has been active. She's the one who did that report in Rockingham um, County, North Carolina, where a veteran um, who smokes marijuana um, or used used to and his wife they haven't felt no drug test they want their child back and they have been put through the ringer she speaks out for those who are silent and want a voice to be spoken out for when i left the south side area and while melissa walmack comes up as a great person a great friend we haven't always been friends trust me and that's me being real behind the scenes Oh, trust me, we went at it when it came down to certain cases because I didn't believe the victim or whatever. But she also was respectful enough to say, hey, I disagree with you and put fight in. I'm going to always respect you as a fighter, Melissa Walmack. You always have shown fight. You always stood your grounds. And when you have saw something, or if I see something where we're like, you know what? Maybe been a little bit wrong on that one. Let's ease up on it or whatever. I'd rather have those type of conversations with my constituents, my voters, my supporters, where they can come to me and say exactly, this is how I feel on the issue. And not be afraid. Because we've been speaking up for those who've been silent too long. I may hear something from you that I need to hear. That can change my mind. I may be hard. I may be rough. I may be rough around the edges. I don't mind that. But I'm trying to get people to speak up because what you may tell me and think is not important is exactly why I need to go ahead and break the case wide open. And Melissa Walmack and so many others in the South Side are fighting that system that I was fighting. I still do. But at the same time frame now, I got to fight for Virginia. And that includes Dan from Pennsylvania County also. She fights for victims, especially those who are minors or whatever, who are victims of sexual assault. She has her own story she could tell you. And honestly, it ain't my job to tell that story. But I wanted her to know that we are making sure pedophiles get mandatory sentencing. Definitely. We are making sure that breaking the silence is now going to have plenty of open voices because now they're going to have more protections to speak out. And they're going to know the difference between fake news and real news. And I want them to know they have been for a lifetime that will continue for that sexual assaults that the Democrats passed directly to you about discretion to report it to schools or report it to parents, we will repeal that law. Every parent has a right to know what their child is going through and also have the best means to protect them and that for them to know, not for the government to cover it up and hide. And we have too many people committing suicides all over that have been silent for too long. Thank you for being that voice for those who have been silent, for those victims that have went to court and thought no 
somebody would stand with them for all those time frames where you found out that those who became the power to be or still is wasn't protecting the victim, but you were speaking up for the victim where all rose and those for support. You are thanked, Melissa Walmack, for what you do and so many others across Virginia do. We won't be stopped. And my job is to protect the First Amendment, but my all, the job is also to recognize or remember where I came from. I will try to support that veteran any kind of way I can. I'm a fighter and always been a fighter, and that ain't going to change for nobody. Nobody's going to break me because I'm unbreakable. And anybody who knows it well is going to tell you, my wife will tell you, I'm unbreakable. So that would kind of tell any and everybody, whoever's rooting against me, you better check the numbers. You better check exactly what's coming to town. You better check who has the heart and the fortitude to go anywhere and everywhere and tell the people the truth. I ain't going to live with a lie and I damn sure ain't going to live in fear. So be damned if you try it on me. So Democrats and Republicans all over. When you come for me, you better bring your A game. Don't worry about the rumors. Don't worry about none of that. Because guess what? You just watch this video of me take it all on. If there's somebody meant for leadership, meant to run Virginia, meant to get us out of crisis, like I said, I would have been the only one who would have not shut down Virginia. And I'm not going to shut down breaking the silence. I'm not going to shut down the American people and their voice. I'm going to protect that voice. So help me God. Because the American people, God protected my voice for this law. That's why I'm opening my eyes and able to speak today. I can't live on my knees because I've never been one to knee down unless it's before the throne of God. I will stand up and rise from the ashes and burn the other sons of bitches down. That's why I'm in this race for governor of Virginia. God called me. God didn't say be perfect. He didn't say be polite. He said the American people will listen to you where they don't listen to the politicians. And you are who I call for. That's why you don't hear them other politicians thanking God or giving God the praise or saying God is good all the time. Because no politicians wasn't called for to be in this race. Merle Rutledge was. And Merle Rutledge wasn't called to be perfect. So get that straight. So I hope I answer everybody's questions for criminal justice while I'm in this race. What I plan to do, my decisions being concise, thanking those for speaking up, refusing to be silent, and committing not to hope. I wish you would screw over the Virginia people. This is Merle Relish, the not-so-typical Republican, the no-longer business-as-usual Republican, the not-so-perfect Republican, the smash-mouth candidate running for Virginia, running Republican down the line. They ain't going to change because I wasn't built for bullshit.